up guys this is Beyond Sanity here with a Lee Sin jungle guide and the first thing I want to go over is masteries for my masteries I take 2109 I take points in smite points in armor pin cooldown reduction attack speed increase minion damage increase normal damage and havoc for my ruins I take armor pin reds, armor yellows, magic resist blues, and physical damage quints. I find these to be some of the fastest ways to help clear the jungle with Lee Sin. For starting item I like to start out with a vampiric scepter. It really helps you to just kind of stay in the jungle and be able to just kind of wreck some face later on giving you that increased survivability yeah and another thing for my starting route I usually try to start at wolves uh, I find this really to be the best starting route I've, I've pretty much always started generally around wolves but if you find yourself where you can't somebody gank somebody tries to go take blue uh, you can start at either wraiths or golems uh, a lot of what these sins have been doing lately have been starting directly at double golems and then going down bot lane and waiting and ganking there. Uh, since the nerf, it doesn't really work as well. What they did with this nerf is they decreased the attack damage ratio of your the first part of your Q, I believe, at by point one. Uh, it's not really a huge nerf, but it is noticeably enough to make you just want to be careful with your early game damage as far as ganking goes. But the biggest the nerf that I most notice is the cooldown. They decrease the cooldown of your Q by one second at every rank. Uh, that's pretty much the only big nerf that I've been noticing. As far as the safeguard nerf, they did nerf the range of it a little bit by 50 uh, doesn't really hurt you at all. I mean, it really puts it in line with uh, Shampoo or any of the other blink spells in the game. So you really don't have to worry about that as far as range. It, it really just feels a lot more natural to me now than it did before. Because before it was a bit too large, I'd say. But as you can see here, I'm usually, I go straight for, after completing wolves, I go straight for a race as you walk over smite the blue wraith and then go ahead down to the bottom at double golems uh, when you're jungling with Lee Sin the main thing you want to watch for like right here is your combos uh, his passive is flurry every single time you attack or use a skill you get 50% increased attack speed for the first two hits so you really want to try to chain your passive in with your jungling meaning you for starting out you want to grab your E and then you'd go E wait attack hit two times hit E again attack two times and go to your next skill same thing same thing Basically what it does is it maximizes your passive and that's really what you want to watch for as Lee Sin. On your first trip back you want to grab a armor cloth and one HP pot and rush up to any one of the either one of the golems. I really as Lee Sin, as you're gonna notice, I usually don't take blue buff until way later on in the game. Simply because I feel as Lee Sin you don't need blue buff and you can be walking around ganking, placing wards, doing a lot of other stuff, even counter jungling, and you just blue buff is not really required and when you do get it in the energy region is just really not worth it. So now after you've completed red, uh, if you're not going up to go back to wolves or do blue, you can watch for ganks. Uh, here I saw the bottom look pretty far pushed up and they were pretty gankable so I decided I was going to go ahead and go in and mark a target. Uh, Talon ended up jumping to me to actually get away but I managed to focus him down. The first exhaust went out on me 
and I couldn't get the Talon, he flashed, so I automatically went back in on a Moomoo. Uh, Moomoo starts running away, but I keep getting just molested by minions here. And I dive back in on Shin to kind of try to save Shin, which is bad because Talon goes to book Smee, and Tark doesn't have any mana, so he can't shatter or stun. So I end up actually feeding First Blood with Shen getting away, which was kind of a bad call on my part. I went in and just the minions were constantly beating on me. And that's really something you're going to have to watch out for when ganking for Lee Sin. You always want to watch with your minions. Uh, if you can jump to a minion and enter the fight that way, just kind of get really creative with it on how you do it. Most of the time, I don't recommend going and starting a gank with your Q. It, it's better to really, if you can get close enough to land your um, your E and land that Tempest slow, then I recommend landing that and then using the slow off of that to really help you land your resonating strike and just you know basically get it maximum damage, but. A lot of the thing about Lee Sin what makes him such a strong ganker is that he's very hard to get away from. Here I noticed that uh, Top is being pushed back and needs some help and needs a cover so I started heading up there and then Top asked for it. Uh, as you'll see here I just kind of like to stand in the bush. Just I don't really want to enter the lane yet because I see that Garen has got pretty low HP. And, you know, I, I noticed that Garen's just kind of like to go in, up to towers and Q towers. So I was just kind of standing there waiting on him, seeing what would happen. Uh, I directly jumped to a minion, managed to land the Tempest, but he flashes. So it's still actually a win for me because the flash is pretty heavy on Garen later on. And his flash is now down on CD. So either way, I think. If, if you just gank to burn summoner spells, I mean, you, all ganks don't necessarily result in kills all the time. And if you just gank and manage to burn a summoner spell, you've actually helped out your lane partner a good bit. Uh, at this point, you just want to be kind of roaming around. There's not really anything jungle-wise you can do. You can go counter jungle if you believe you have the ability. But most of the time, what you're going to be asked to do now at this stage of the game is pretty much hold lanes and make sure that lanes are covered and held pretty well. Uh, when holding lanes, don't try to attack minions a lot because you really don't want to push out the lane too much. You want to just be careful with that and watch how that goes on. Uh, with taking CS on Lee Sin, uh, you want to make sure to use your skills. You want to get your passive off. Alright, and from this point, you want to be grabbing your Riggle's Lantern and assisting in team fights if you can find anything you get to. Uh, you want to prioritize low HP and you need generally people that are going to be putting out damage carries and such like that. That's really where Lee Sin excels. Uh, as using your ultimate for a kill, uh, you have to be really careful that you actually kill the target and don't end up just pushing them away when they have about 10 HP left. You just be really careful and just watch your damage with that. Uh, as you can see, right now I'm just kind of helping the lanes progress and pushing them out when needed. Uh, I go back to base and grab boots and a giant's belt for that increased HP. I notice that there's a fight going on at bot and that they are tower dived by an Amumu. Uh, I come into the jungle, I really wasn't expecting to find the Amumu, but I actually end up, as you can see right there, finding him and picking up the kill on him, which is great. Uh, if you notice the ward placement right there at Dragon, I don't actually recommend placing a ward right at Dragon. It limits the vision the ward actually gets out, but it does enable you to watch Dragon. The reason you put it there is you can actually jump in on that ward without wasting your Q into the fight or if you're going to steal it, the dragon, and they pull it, you can jump to the ward and then Q the dragon. Uh, here, Shen goes in, I go in, I get exhausted, and 
as I was just talking about earlier. I go in and just kind of, once again, underestimate my damage, and I end up kicking Talon away and trying to cue him, and then he goes in the way. And I, we actually lose the kill because of that, but hey. Uh, here I'm ganking around. Uh, there's another fight at top. I see I can catch the bomb. Remember, low HP targets. I kick her away. Uh, get exhausted. Shin doesn't pick up the kill. And then he comes back and does. So it's pretty much all good there. Uh, for here, I really wanted to help Ergot out, but I was really low. I figured that Ergot was going to step back. And he didn't, so I missed my Q. But I did go back in on Ergot, and as you can see, Garen just started kind of freaking out because there I was again. He trying to run towards me, and it don't work like that. From here, if you're on the other side of the map and you can pick up the jungle, it's always a good thing to do. I mean, I don't really not recommend it. You just have to really be careful. At this stage of the game, I'm getting pretty fed to the point where I can just demolish people. I went back, I've gotten my frozen mallet. Uh, now a lot of people recommend war mobs. Uh, for me, I prefer frozen mallet and atmas over war mobs and atmas. And the simple reason of why is as you're progressing through the game, the frozen mallet not only gives you a slow but it gives you that extra AD early, which is really, really helpful uh, later on. The main things you want to watch out for, though, when using, uh, if you do decide to go use the Warm Ogs, is just, it takes a lot of farming to get Warm Ogs really farmed up, and it just, for me in the jungle, you don't really get a huge amount of farm like you do in lane. So I'm rather have that just slow on proc. If you watch here, you're gonna notice as soon as you hit someone, they're slowed. It enables you to really just stick onto one target and just really be able to kind of get them. If you watch that, I queued a Mumu, and right as a Mumu started to walk away he split from ash i automatically jump on to a move and jump on to ash now the tempest slow ended up hitting garen and if you just watch here he's completely slowed he can't really do anything or get away so that's really where you are gonna extremely excel on lee sin is just really managing to maintain that one target stick to that one target and be able to just really burst him down uh, for this part, I'm just going to really go in and show you how fed a Lee Sin can be and what a fed Lee Sin is, can just really do to an enemy team. At this point, I consider myself fully built. I mean, I've got Wriggles uh, and everything else you see there. Uh, if you notice that, I three-shotted LeBlanc with a kill, what I call the kill combo on Lee Sin. His actual kill combo, if you can manage to pull this off, and this, this puts out a massive amount of burst pretty much steadily through the game, it's Q, R, and then Q. What you would do is you would Q your target, you'd kick them, and then you'd Q right back to them. And that really puts out a huge amount of burst, and you're able to just really get off the killing the power that you need in a bursting situation like that uh, it's especially good for displacing carries displacing pretty much any one target but his kick can also be used to displace multiple enemies as you're gonna see right here I believe it is but yeah there's Talon watch Talon he actually ends up getting knocked up by the kick to LeBlanc and you can really situationally use that if people line up correctly for you. You're going to see just some amazing things happen with some kicks. Uh, as far as flash goes, you really just want to watch for walls, things like that. I, I tend not to flash until I absolutely have to because uh, one of the reasons I love Rickles so much on the is because of that. 
uh, you can put a ward over a wall, jump to a ward, and avoid having to use your flash, which is just excellent. Uh, at this point, you know, we're just pushing up on their base, and generally, when you're this fed, uh, nothing's going to be able to stop you. I mean, I've, I traded out a Wriggles for a Bloodthirster, but... I mean, honestly, in 80% of the games, this this wouldn't happen. You wouldn't see that happening. But this just gives you kind of an idea of in-game burst of Lee Sin. But your your main thing you're trying to do with this build is not necessarily be extremely bursty, but you're trying to be enough of a presence and a threat that the team wants to kind of focus, shift their focus to you. You're trying to be mostly an off tank while putting out still decent damage. Uh, I've tried straight DPS Lee Sin builds and I, I used to run one all the time and it really didn't work. So hey, this is my Lee Sin guide. I hope you guys enjoyed it for Jungle and I'll see you next time.